In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can start making a hundred to three hundred dollars a day on Amazon with just your laptop and a cell phone. And it doesn't matter if you don't have any business experience. In fact, I've taken people like Terrell from zero to making over six figures a year on Amazon. And I've also taken people like Jimmy from zero dollars to a hundred thousand dollars a month selling on Amazon. So even if you're going to start small, I'm also going to be showing you how you can then scale it up to over a thousand dollars a day. Plus, keep in mind, this is the same strategy that I use to go from a felon at 17 years old, only making $11 an hour to a multimillionaire at 23 that was able to retire my mom and buy an apartment complex at 23 years old and even buy my dream penthouse at 25. So if you stay until the end of this video, this video alone might quite literally change your life. Let's get into it. The first step to making your first $100 day or $300 a day on Amazon is obviously creating an account, right? So to create an Amazon seller account, you're going to want to go to sellercentral.amazon.com. And it's very straightforward. You're just going to click sign up. If you want more info, you can go to learn more and it'll give you more info on Amazon. You know, the number one e-commerce marketplace in the world, as you can see, it says sell with the fastest growing or preferred acquisition channel. Uh, more than 70% of Amazon sellers generate their first sale in less than 60 days. So again, here's a bunch of information and promotions that Amazon is actually having right now for new sellers, which is, you know, it's perfect if you're a new seller right now and you haven't created an account, you can take advantage of these incentives right here. But uh, again, all you're going to do is click sign up and create that Amazon seller account. It is $40 a month, but that $40 a month is nothing compared to the amount of money you're going to be making if you follow the steps in this video. So once you create your Amazon seller account, the next step is to actually find a product. But before we go and find a product, we need to know what, what to actually look for in a product. So I actually put together this winning product checklist to make it very, very easy for you to identify if you're looking at a product that is worth buying. Okay. And I'm going to include this checklist in the description down below. It's completely free for you guys to go ahead and use. So go ahead and grab that, you know, before the end of this video. Now, we only want to sell products that we're making at least $3 profit per unit on minimum, okay? $3 profit per unit. Make sure you keep that in mind. At least a 35% ROI, okay? Those are two metrics I want you to implant in your brain because if it's anything less than that, then it's not really worth it. And a great tool that I recommend every single one of you guys go ahead and get is scan profit scan profit is a tool that will allow you to scan products via your mobile phone or with the google chrome extension it'll allow you to pull up the analytics of every product on amazon and it'll show you which products are profitable to sell okay so with this tool you'll be easily able to identify if they're in this profit range okay so make sure you guys go ahead and grab this tool right here the link to this tool i'll also throw in the description to make it easy for you guys and I'll go ahead and highlight it as well. Now, when we're looking at products, and again, Scam Profit will be able to identify this for you as well. Make sure that the products that you're looking to sell, Amazon is a seller on them less than 25% of the time in the last three months, or not a seller on them at all, okay? So either make sure that Amazon is on there less than 25% of the time in the last 90 days, or they're not on there at all. You do not want to compete with Amazon, okay? And if if you are a beginner, just sell products where Amazon isn't even on the listing at all, okay? That is my advice. Now, the next thing that you wanna look at is the sales volume. You wanna only sell products that at least have 30 sales per month on the listing. Obviously, the more the better, but it really just depends on how many sellers are on the listing. But I like to use the number 30 as a good gauge. Make sure it's getting at least 30 orders plus per month. And again, you can use scan profit to validate the sales volume. As far as sales rank, make sure it's under 200K average in the last 30 days. Um, and again, all these metrics, guys, I know if you're a beginner, it may sound complicated. It's really not. These are all just things that you need to look for when using the scan profit tool to make sure that you're buying the best type of product. Okay. And even if the product is outside of these ranges, you will still make sales but you'll get sales at a faster velocity if you're meeting all of this criteria right here. Now, you're also gonna wanna use a tool called Keepa. Keepa will allow you to see the price history 
of a product so you can avoid let's say for example you see a product on amazon and it's 30 dollars, and you're able to buy it from your supplier for 10 dollars, right we want to be able to avoid the fact that if that product during a certain month drops to ten dollars we want to know that ahead of time so we're not buying it for 10 and then a month later we have to sell it for 10 and we end up losing money right so keepa allows you to see the price history of products and see when they're consistent and when they drop or when they go up because in the other hand you might buy a product for 20 dollars from your supplier and that product might be selling for 30 on amazon right now but next month because you're looking at the keepa chart it's going to go up to 40 or 50 dollars which will make it a profitable opportunity for you so that is what keepa is for so again you want to make sure that keepa is showing a consistent price or a spike in the near future and uh your your current selling price should be a reasonable expectation moving forward no more than 20 percent higher than the typical price range okay uh again this is just metrics that you can adjust your keepa you know you can make it sort by sold in the last 30 days and just make sure that sales are happening on the on their stock history okay so these are all things to be aware of when analyzing these products using Keepa. Now, another thing that's really important is we want to make sure that we're not competing with the brand itself. So for example, if you're selling Fiji water, if you go on a Fiji water listing on Amazon and Fiji is a seller on that listing, you do not want to sell that product. If you're trying to sell Starbucks coffee and you go on the Starbucks coffee listing on Amazon and Starbucks is selling that product, you do not want to sell that product. We do not want to compete with the brand owner. And in fact, you can't. They'll simply just kick you off the listing. So one thing to check is that the brand owner does not sell the item. Make sure that you're checking this because guys, you will lose money if you try to compete with the brand. Owner. Some brands allow third party sellers and those are the brands that we love. Those are the brands that we want to work with. Those are the products of, of brands that we want to sell. Some brands don't allow that. Some brands want to sell their own products on Amazon, and that's okay. We don't want to sell their products, okay? So make sure that you're looking at that. And also make sure that the, the buy box is rotating amongst everyone. Scam Profit easily identifies this for you, but make sure that there's no seller that's dominating the buy box, meaning there's no seller that has at least 80% of the buy box at all times. You do not want that because that means you're not going to get sales. Now, another thing to, to check is that the product does not have any IP complaints. You can use a tool called IP Alerts to easily check this. Scam Profit will also let you know as well. I like to cross-reference both just in case. And don't sell anything heavy. The heavier the item, the more expensive the shipping, the more expensive Amazon will also charge you to ship it if you're doing FBA. So cost to consider, sales tax, make sure that you're still profitable after sales tax. Make sure that you're still profitable. If you're using a prep center, which a lot of my students use prep centers because they're scaling twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars months, and they don't want to, you know, have a whole bunch of inventory at their house. If you're using a prep center, make sure that in the scam profit tool, you add in the settings your prep fee. So now every time you scan something or you look on it, and you look at something in Google Chrome, it already includes your prep fee when it shows you your profit, what your profit would be. Okay. So make sure to include your prep fee when using scam profit. And also remember when you're shipping to Amazon, like when your supplier is shipping your products to Amazon, it usually costs around 30 cents a pound. So just keep that in mind. Now, the last thing that you want to pay attention to is the number of new sellers on the Keepa chart. Okay. Keepa will tell you how many new sellers are joining that listing. Make sure that it's not spiking. Make sure it's not something that everybody is hopping on. Okay. This usually happens with products that are trendy. I don't really like trendy products. I mean, they're cool to make a lot of money in a short period of time, but they usually get saturated very quick. I like to sell things that sell consistently, that are pretty low key, that are, that are products from big brands, but are products from like small upcoming brands. Okay. Those are the types of products that I like to sell. And uh, yeah, guys, that is really all you need to consider when deciding whether you should sell that product or not. Now, when it comes to actually picking the business model, because Amazon has several ways where you can sell, such as online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, and wholesale, it really just depends on your situation. So for example, if you're watching this right now and you have less than $1,000 to your name, I would highly recommend you start with retail arbitrage. So retail arbitrage, if you don't know what that means, is when you go into stores like Costco, Sam's Club, 
Ollie's and you scan products using the scan profit app and you buy products from those stores and then to resell them on Amazon. Now, the reason why this is great for people that don't have a lot of money is these stores don't have MLQs. They don't have minimum order quantities. Meaning if you only have a hundred dollars to your name and uh, there's a product in that store that's profitable, if you had a supplier for that product, they might force you to order a hundred units. That might be their minimum order quantity, their MLQ. But if you find that same product at Costco, you might be able to profit selling that product and Costco isn't gonna force you to order a hundred. You're gonna be able to order as many as you can afford, flip that money, sell it on Amazon, and then you can go and order more. So retail arbitrage is good because there is no minimum order quantity. You can work with whatever money you have. You can work with whatever budget and you can literally download Scam Profit today, create an Amazon seller account today, go into your local Costco today and make a sale on Amazon today. So that's why retail arbitrage is good because it's easy for a beginner seller to get their feet wet and you don't need a lot of money. Now, online arbitrage is kind of like the next step up um, I actually think online arbitrage and wholesale are kind of like at the same level. They, ha they both have their pros and cons, but they're both great business models. Online arbitrage is when you buy products from, instead of stores, websites such as Target.com, Kohl's.com, several websites like that that are having a discount on certain things. And you're buying products from these websites and then getting those products shipped to a prep center. And every time you get a sale, that prep center ships it straight to your customer. So you're able to make a lot of money online. I mean, one of my students is doing over $100,000 a month doing this, making 30 grand a month profit, and he's never touched a product in his life. He's never shipped a product in his life. He's doing it all through OA, online arbitrage. So that is a great business model. If you have at least over $1,000, you have credit cards because you can leverage credit to scale and you don't wanna leave your home. Great business model for you if you're watching this right now. Now, wholesale is where you partner with these brands and you open up wholesale accounts with them. So you open up wholesale account with Fiji or you open up a wholesale account with Sony and you're buying their products in bulk directly from the brand and you're storing it either in your house or in Amazon's warehouse. And every time you get a sale, you're either shipping it or Amazon's warehouse is shipping it for you. Obviously, if Amazon is doing the work for you, you're gonna pay a little bit more in fees, but you'll be able to infinitely scale because Amazon has thousands of warehouses, thousands of employees. So they're able to fulfill on all your orders, no matter how many orders you get. Now, in my opinion, I like online arbitrage a little bit more than wholesale simply because you can run a business from home and you can have VAs doing all of the work, okay? We actually teach this in my highest level program called Legacy, where I actually train a VA for you and place him in your business to find products for you. Because we actually train anywhere between 30 to 50 VAs in my company every single month put them through a rigorous Navy SEALs Amazon training and make them product sourcing savages. And then we place them in our legacy mastermind students business. So if you're interested in that, you can book a call down below and uh, you know, you can literally in 48 hours have a product sourcing savage in your business, finding products for you. And all you have to do is swipe your card for those products and you'll instantly start making money on Amazon. Now, don't get me wrong though, wholesale is good. And I do have students killing it in wholesale as well. But the only thing with wholesale is you're kind of at your supplier's mercy. You can only sell products when your suppliers have profitable products that you can go and buy from them. And sometimes these suppliers take anywhere between a week to maybe even a month before they reply to you and tell you that you're approved with them and that you can buy products from them. So online arbitrage is just a little bit faster and it still provides you that remote work lifestyle where you don't have to ship anything, you don't have to touch anything, and you're still only working maybe an hour, two hours a day. Now, once you've picked your business model, it's time to go and find a product or go find a supplier, right? So if you picked retail arbitrage, you just have to go find a product. You literally just have to go to stores like Costco, Sam's Club, Ollie's, and start scanning products using the Scam Profit app. And eventually you're gonna scan a product that's profitable and boom, you're gonna make money like that. So if you're watching this, you have less than $1,000, I recommend that you scan anywhere between 50 to 100 products a day. And I guarantee you, you will make your first five to 10 grand within the next 60 days. Guaranteed, you just gotta put in the work. Now, if you wanna do online arbitrage, I mean, I'm not just trying to tell you this so I can make money, but I highly suggest that you get into my program 
and learn how to hire and train a VA. And if you do have a little bit more money to spend, then you can actually just work with me at the highest level and have my team place a VA in your business that's already been trained by us. Now, if you're not gonna have a VA trained by us placed in your business, you're still gonna have to go and hire a VA and also find opportunities for them. So what I suggest you do is use a website like BrickSeek, brickseek.com, and it'll show you anytime a website like Best Buy or Dick Sporting Goods does a massive sale, and that right there could be an opportunity for you to go and source products on that website and then resell them on Amazon. Now, these websites aren't always the best, and that's why I love just having my personal VA go and find products for me, because these websites, since they have a lot of people that know about the websites, these products tend to tank in price very fast. So you might be able to make money, but you won't be able to make money for long. They're all kind of like short-term wins. Now, if you're doing wholesale, what you should be doing to find a supplier is making phone calls to these brands and asking them if you could open up a wholesale account also sending emails to those brands as well. But the easiest way by far, and I'm gonna give you a gem right here, the easiest way by far to find a supplier if you're doing wholesale is the Google Maps method. I have a video on the Google Maps method and I'll throw that video right here so you can go and watch it more in depth. But basically I'll give you the summary. It entails just going on Google Maps and typing any Amazon category and then typing the word distributor after it. So for example, grocery distributor pet product distributor, health and household distributor, going on Google Maps and typing that in and then seeing all of the distributors in your local area. The same distributors that are gonna pop up for you aren't gonna pop up for me. I live in Atlanta, you might live in Canada, you might live in Kansas, you might live in Florida, right? I live in Atlanta, I have different distributors than you. So you already have a local advantage because you're able to drive to that distributor and build a real relationship with them or even just make a phone call, but let them know that you're in that local area. That is how I opened up my first wholesale account. And I guarantee you, if you make enough phone calls and you're actually hungry, you will open up your first wholesale account with a local supplier pretty fast, okay? And if you are wondering what to say to these suppliers, I'm actually gonna go ahead and include my cold call script in the description down below for you. Now guys, that is basically all you have to do to go and start making 100 to $300 a day on Amazon. And obviously there's other things involved such as you know shipping products to Amazon, getting set up with a prep center, all these other things. But I actually have a one hour in-depth video here on YouTube, which I'll throw up right here, that you can go and watch to get all of the nitty gritty details that I didn't go over in this video. And that's exactly how you get Amazon to pay you $300 a day. And while you do have all the knowledge you need to now go ahead and be successful, there are some things that you might get stuck on, such as what products to sell, how to scale up your capital so you can scale up your store, and a lot of other things that you know I ran into when I was a beginner seller that cost me a lot of money and cost me a lot of time. So you have two options right now. You can either go and do this yourself, which is what I did and I became successful, but it took me six years, or you can partner with me and my team so we can give you a clear roadmap on how to get to where you wanna be fast. So if that's you, if you're watching this, you do have some money set aside and you want to work with me and my team, there is a link down below where you can watch a 20 minute video that I put together that explains how this process works. And if you are interested, it'll allow you to book a call at the end. Thank you for watching this video. Like, subscribe if it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.